Hi guys, Krista from Mosaic Party and Event Design here with some Blooms by Mosaic. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Today I'm going to show you how to make my coffee filter red roses. Now, there are a lot of tips and techniques and steps to building one single rose. So I'm going to break this apart into, I think, three videos. Um, one video is going to be to show you how to make the leaves and the greens. One video is going to be able to show you how to um, cut the petals and color them and the quantities required. And then the third video is going to be about the construction of the piece. I think that's the only way I can do it without running into video problems as I've been having um, some rollover and stopping on my filming due to the capacity of my phone camera, which is what I'm using to film. So this video is going to be how to show you um, the petals and what we're going to need, the quantities and the shapes. And as you can see, I have pre-done ones here, but I am gonna show you how to paint these as well. Okay, so let's get started. First things first is you are going to need some cone coffee filters. You'll need some floral tape for the final construction. You'll need some scissors, some tacky glue for the construction, a toothpick for the construction, and then you're going to need to color them. You're going to need to make some food coloring dye. So we're going to do that with some gel food coloring in a red. You will also need a foam paintbrush and a little bit of water. And then I'm using a product called Elmer's Glue All. This is a glue not unlike tacky glue. This one doesn't dry quite as fast as tacky glue, but it is a fast drying. You can also use PVA construction glue or flood flow trawl, which is not a glue at all. It's a paint conditioner. So my mix of paint, I'll talk about why I use this and the tricks behind it. It's a painting technique for water-based paints. But first and foremost, let's cut our petals and talk about the quantities of coffee filters and shapes that you're gonna to need to cut. So our goal is to create three of these, three sizes in these heart shapes. And then one size of these sort of single petal shapes. We're going to start with this one and move forward to the rest. So I'm just gonna put these aside because the number one petal is a little bit different than these ones. So the number one petal is a really thickened paper. It's actually, unlike the rest of the petals, there are all these individual pieces. Number one is two pieces together. And that happens and occurs in the way we cut them and the way we paint them. What that does is it gives me sort of a stronger interior base core on my bud to, to work with when I'm putting on these softer leaves around it. So for the whole flower, you're going to need 12 coffee filters and that's going to get you all your petals and two leaves. It will also get you the calyx piece for the bottom of the flower. Look for that um, second upload I'm going to do that shows you how to do the greens. And you'll be able to see how to do the, the calyx and the leaves. Okay, so for the petal number one, <laughs> I'm gonna keep knocking that flower over. I would like to keep it in frame a little bit if I could, just for inspiration. Um, for petal number one, you are going to need two coffee filters. You can stack them together and then you wanna fold them in half up to just before that crimped line. And then I'm going to use a pencil to show you, but I don't generally have templates because I do most everything freehand once I figure out how I wanna build a flower. So our goal here 
is to do half that heart shape because when you open it up, it becomes that. So what you want to do, and the pencil marks are just a general guiding for me, is what you want to do is create this sort of petal shape and come down onto this folded seam about a quarter of the way from the top, leaving the rest of the fold. And then cut it out. Now you can cut your petal shape however you want. Um, if you want to round it, you can. If you want to point it more, you can. If you want to come in as a dip, you can. It really won't matter because we're going to be curling our edges. There's no right or wrong. There are a lot of varieties of roses out there and this is not a specific variety. When you open it up, you will have these petal number ones. They're a heart shape and they're stuck together in two pieces. Leave them that way. We're going to glue them together to create this really thick paper. So you need two of those. Petal number two is a little bit larger and we need We need four of those. There's my fourth one. Okay, so we're going to get four of them out of two coffee filters. And you're going to fold it the same way, right up to the bottom of that crimped edge. And if your petal number one is about that height, your petal number two should be about that height. And then your petal number threes, when we come in, will be a little bit taller again. And you're going to cut the same general shape. You're going to come in on the seam and come up. And then you're going to cut this whole edge off. I'm just cutting off these little bits and then I'm going to keep this for another project later on. That's good paper to keep. All right. So your petal number twos are also stuck together like number ones, right? These are your petal number ones, but we kept them together. Petal number twos, we're going to tear apart so that we have four, okay? You're going to do the same with petal number three. So petal number three, we need four. And you're going to get that out of two coffee filters. And you're going to fold them exactly the same way. And just as a guide to show you, we have our petal number ones, petal number twos, petal number three should be about there. If you're using a smaller cone coffee filter, this is a number four. These are a number four, which uh, means that it, it's an eight to 12 cup coffee pot. Um, if you're using a number two, they're a little bit smaller and narrower. You'll want to go right to the top edge of the coffee filter for the number three petals. All right, and we're going to come in and cut it generally the same way. And we're going to cut that whole edge off. For those of you that like to make lots of excess greens and whatnot, these little scraps are great for um, making sort of olive leaves. I just quickly usually cut them out and then I keep a tub of them set aside. Olive, um, little greens. They're great for calyx too, for the bottoms. Um, and I always just cut them out of my scraps and set them aside in a little tub for later on when I have green paint and extra time. But anyways, I digress. All right, petal number three. You will have two of them, but you need to make four. 
So just tear them apart. And that's your petal number threes. So we're going to move on to these petals. You will need, generally I use five. I cut out six because that's naturally what occurs. Um, if you want to cut extras, you can. Sometimes I cut eight just to be safe, but really I'm going to use five of them. These are my outside petals and you kind of want them to be an odd number for balance of your flower. So I have three coffee filters and I'm going to fold, I'm going to fold these differently. This one, because I want more surface space, I want to use up more of the coffee filter. I'm going to use this folded edge as my bottom and I'm going to take this point right here and fold it over to the edge on the other side while keeping my bottom symmetrical. Okay. So keeping in mind that you don't have anything in here, there's nothing folded over here. So I want to stay within this and use this shape within this seam to cut this petal shape. So I'm going to do that. And I'm only cutting half that petal shape because it's folded. And there you go. And you can clean up your edges. Quite often when you have more than two coffee filters folded together, you'll find you'll get a little bit of an uneven cutting, but it really doesn't matter. And don't worry about the fold marks either. That's going to come out when we paint it and you won't have the fold marks in there anymore. Okay, so these ones will also have a seam keeping them together. You can just cut them. I don't know if you guys can hear my music in the background. I probably should have turned it off. I like having sort of meditative music going while I'm crafting. Either that or some sort of jazz or something. I didn't think uh, today was a bouncy, high energy jazz day. All right, so you will need five or six of the petal number fours. You will need four of the number threes. You will also need four of the number twos. And then you need two of the double thick number ones. I'm going to show you how to color these and then we're going to come back in another video and do the construction. Okay, so to color these, I'm actually, I'm working on wax paper here, um, but I'm going to, I've already got a messy piece of parchment going that has um, already had some coloring. As you can see, I've been coloring today. It's all over my hands. And we're going to talk about the mix. Um, so the mix, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it is a really watery mix that'll just soak into your coffee filter with ease. It's a nice bright red. And the way we achieve that is with um, food coloring, a construction glue and a little bit of water. That's actually a lot of water, but um, the water step is important to add it after we mix these two together so that we don't dilute the color pigmentation out of this. A lot of you have had trouble with um, saturation and drying with bleeding or blotching and uh, whatnot. So this is a new step. If you've watched my previous videos, this is a new step for me. Um, it's actually, derived from a painting technique that I've been doing lately and I realized that it works well for for making sure your color is strong and pigmented because it bonds the glue itself bonds with the pigmentation colors um, with and it what we're using it for is to extend the paint so what I mean by that is that we're going to get we're going to bulk up the paint without using more color 
Otherwise, we would need so much of the red, especially red. I'm not sure why red pigmentation in food coloring just doesn't saturate very well. It doesn't matter if it's on paper or if it's an icing or in cake batter, you need a lot of it to make a really rich color. Um, so the construction glue is going to add sort of an extended life to that. We're gonna bulk up the paint. It's not gonna take down the pigmentation. It's gonna still keep the uh, color really strong. And um, it's also going to give you this really great Mod Podge effect when it dries. So you can skip the step of Mod Podging unless you want a really high gloss shine, um, but you will still need to UV protect your flower. And I do that after a couple of days of it sitting and making sure that all the construction is tight and I've got it shaped the way I want. So the mix here, I'm gonna set this one aside and show you how to make the mix. The mix here is going to be for one flower, for one single flower, you're gonna need about one true teaspoon of color. And I say true teaspoon because I don't mean like a heaping teaspoon of sugar that you would put in your coffee. Um, and of course, measurements are just general. I'm just using the, the amount of a teaspoon so that you have the ratios of what I'm going to be doing next with the paint or with the glue. I'm just gonna stick that stir stick aside. So you can see you have a really thick gel here. What we wanna do is to one, I don't think my, there. To one teaspoon of color, you will need about three quarters of a teaspoon of this construction glue. And like I mentioned, you can use tacky glue or Mod Podge. Um, PVA glue is a construction glue that you find in your hardware store. Elmer's does the glue wall, which is a very close um, formula to that. Don't get the school glue, it's different. It's way um, weaker, <laughs> way weaker. Um, this one is much stronger. So you need about three quarters of a teaspoon of that to your one teaspoon of color. Ah, I'm making a mess. That's what I do best. And then you're just gonna stir that up. And as you can see, I'm not really losing the color pigmentation. If I were to just thin this down with water, I would get way too much um, thinned out color and I would have to add a lot more of the paint or the, the food coloring to get the saturation. This is when we wanna add our water. So add just a tiny little bit to start just to sort of melt it all together. That way you're not just stirring around clumps of, of gel and glue. You're really melting it all together and maybe I should say melding it all together. It's not really melting. There's no heat apply here. All right, and just stir it up. And the consistency you want is going to be just literally a very watery mix, but because we added that glue with the um, color first, we've bonded the color in and the saturation. The watery mix, it should just run and drip off your paintbrush. And you will know right away if your mix is not right once you start painting. And I'll explain that right now. So three things to making sure that you get a nice saturated color with your petal and no bleeding or blotching. Number one, add the glue conditioner or a paint extender into your color. It'll help seal the color in and help it dry so that the water doesn't evaporate and take some of the color out of the really fibrous paper. Number two is a foam paintbrush. And that's because the foam paintbrush helps you control how much moisture is in your coffee filter. The more moisture, the more likely it is going to dry all blotchy or the colors are gonna bleed to and pool together in there. So with the foam paintbrush, you can really work in those fibers. You can pull out the excess moisture. They're gonna dry quicker too if you pull out that excess. 
and you're going to get a nice stronger color without bleeding and blotching. Number three is the way you dry them. Lay them flat on a piece of wax paper or parchment paper, not the paper that you've been working on. If you lay them flat on here, it's going to draw up all that pigmentation and color as it's drying and it's going to blotch on your paper. And I will show you an example. I think I have one right here. See this? That actually blotched and that is red food coloring but the pigmentations kind of broke out a little bit and it blotched because I left it sitting in a pool like that. So once you've painted it, move it aside onto a piece of wax paper like this. If you see green on this paper, don't worry, it's on the inside underneath. <laughs> I've folded it down. It's not gonna pick up any color in my red. Um, and set them aside to dry flat. They're, with this glue in there, it's going to dry very quickly. Um, probably only about four hours before you can really use it, but in about two hours, if you're in a pinch, they will be dry enough to use. I just like them to set a little bit better. So I leave them as long as I can and get them really dry and crisp. So go through and do all your petals. I'm just gonna quickly finish this last number one here and talk about why I've left the number one as that sort of double-sided paper. So if you remember the number ones are that really thick paper, because I have glue in this mix, it's going to bond it together and it's going to dry like that. So if you need thicker paper, this is the way to do it by adding the glue in with your color. It does so many things. It's amazing. So set those aside and then move on to your other petals. When you get to these thinner petals, they should saturate right through. You can see it went right through. Just touch it up, pull out the excess color. And then set it aside to dry. If you have too much color in one, you can just put your next piece on, pull some of the color up. If you find your, your brush is too damp and it's not really pulling on any of that excess I talked about. All right. Now, I mentioned that you would know right away if your color wasn't right, if you mix your ratios. And it's as simple as, just trying to set these aside. It's as simple as this. If when you go to paint, your paint doesn't kind of just saturate through, you need to thin it down with a little more water. Not a lot, just a little. If you find your color is stronger in some areas and it's almost resistant to pushing around and almost like little waxy spots or like somebody's colored it with crayon instead, it means you have too much glue. So go back in and add just a tiny little bit of water and a little more of the food coloring. But you'll know right away. And then of course, if you don't have enough food coloring, your color isn't gonna be vibrant. Now keep in mind with food coloring, it is always going to dry a little bit lighter than your paint itself, but as you can see, when you have that that mix I, I talked about with the construction glue, your color should stay nice and strong. You're not gonna fade like a lot of you have been having problems with. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up all of these and then I'm gonna come back on a separate video and show you how to construct the flower. I've already um, done the video for the greens so I have these ready to go and I'm going to upload them all in sequence and I hope you're having fun crafting guys. Come back and see how I construct the flower with all the dried and finished completed pieces. Happy crafting!